In this video, I'm going to show you how to untile repeating textures and then how to take that a step further and blend multiple ground textures onto one plane so that you have a more realistic ground texture that changes between different types of ground as it does in the real world. Let's get started. I have a really cool temple scene here that I created with assets from none other than Chuck CG. His stuff is free, high quality, and he's just a great, generous a Blender creator. Love all of his kits that he releases. I'm going to create a simple ground plane and I'm going to size it up really, really big. So I'm going to press S100, enter, and then I want it even bigger. So maybe S4, enter, there we go. Pretty large and when we get low, it's roughly you know a horizon basically. So this is a large scene and that's always a challenge is making large scenes look large and not having a texture on the ground repeat over and over and also having the ground look realistic and that it's not the same texture everywhere. The ground is not always grass everywhere or dirt everywhere. There's variation, there's different areas, erosion, things like that change it. So I'm going to show you how to use multiple PBR textures on one plane within one material and have them change and have variation. So with our ground plane selected, let's go to materials and make that. Let's call it super ground because we will not settle for just one simple texture. We're going to use two or three. I'm going to split my view and turn the uh, upper view to the uh, shader editor right there. And with the node wrangler out on enabled in the settings, I can then press control shift T and I can load textures and they'll all be connected automatically to the proper input sockets on the BSDF shader. So let's go to my textures folder and then ground. I've got a few nice ground things here. Let's, let's start with a dirt as our base texture and then we'll add grass and then something else on top of that. So here's a rocky texture. This doesn't look very large. This maybe is like a six by six foot area. That's not quite big enough for what we're looking for. We've got muddy leaves. By the way, I'll have links in the description down below where you can find uh, a lot of textures like this for free. Let's start with this one. Aerial Rocks 04. This looks like a pretty large scale image and that's, good. that's a good starting point. So click Printable Texture Setup. And there we go. We have all five texture nodes already created. We do need to do a little bit of tweaking here to improve this. So this is the ambient occlusion. And for whatever ridiculous reason, even though AO has been around forever, it still doesn't work in the node wrangler. So we're going to go to add and then mix color. Drop that right there. Change it to multiply. Plug that in and turn it up. And now we've got this crazy looking terrain, which is a seamless texture and it actually looks pretty sweet already, but the scale looks a little weird. It makes this look tiny. So to change that, we're going to go over here to the scale of the mapping node and let's try four enter. Uh, let's try eight. Yeah, we can see the tiling. It's already happening. Don't worry. I'll show you what to get around that in just a minute. So this texture was made very well. It is made seamlessly, but that doesn't mean you can't see the repeating lines once you get it at a scale like this. I'm going to go to 10 and maybe leave it there for now. Okay, so to break up the tiling, we're going to do some really cool vector uh, tricks. Don't worry, there's no math involved because I am allergic to math. I don't, don't do math. I hate math. I try to avoid it at all cost. So basically, this vector data right here, so the vector data from the mapping node is telling all these image files the scale and the rotation and the location. Now they're all zeros. We could move the location or we could do the rote... We could rotate stuff like this, which we don't want to do. But what we want to do is we want to break up the tiling. One way to do that is with a Voronoi node. So let's reset all these top numbers to zero. And we're going to basically mess with the rotation data uh, to give us random rotations of each rep repetition of the texture, which will essentially break up the tiling. So shift A, type in VOR for ro Voronoi texture. And we're going to grab the uh, color data. Then we're going to shift A and create another one called the mix node, change this to vector, plug in the color to input uh, B actually, and then drag the result into rotation. And instantly you'll see something changed, but we're not quite sure. So let me show you what this texture actually looks like. If I control shift, click it twice, we are now previewing the color output. See, so it's going directly to the material output, just temporarily so we can see what this is. This is what the Veronia texture looks like geometric totally random cells with different colors to us colors are just pretty nice attributes of something but to blender specifically when we're dealing with vector color can mean rotation or scale or location in this case we're just doing rotation so this color turning into rotation data here coming into b and then the result is going into rotation here which is basically randomly spinning these image tiles in different directions 
Let's go back to normal mode, control shift, click the final node here. And let me show you what happens when we play with this mix factor. So we're going from a zero rotation, which is original. See, everything's very obviously tiling like that. And as we crossfade to input B, oh, we can see it's getting chopped up into little polygonal chunks, which is the noise pattern here. And so we have now broken the uh, tiling problem, but we do have some edging issues here because obviously these uh, polygons are pretty sharp and there's no smoothing between them. Uh, when you get it real close, it's just chink, one image to the other. We're going to blur those edges by basically messing with the vector of this noise. So we'll be messing with the vector of this noise to mess with the vector of this images and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, once it's set up, you can actually make a node group to do this for you to randomize rotation. And that's very easy. Uh, once you have it set up, it's great. You can reuse it later, but uh, let me show you this cool trick. So we're actually gonna copy this vector mix, put it over here. Oh, this frame is annoying me, delete that. Okay, so we got a vector mix. Let's plug it into the vector of the Voronoi noise. We're going to make a noise texture right there. Plug it into B. And for A, we want this to be the original UV data right here. So grab this UV data, put it into A. All right, let's put the factor all the way up. And now this noise texture is basically blurring this Voronoi texture. Let's preview that. Here we go. This is what it looks like. Looks very psychedelic. Whereas before it was just normal UV mapped polygons. Let's turn it all the way up and let's turn the scale of the noise factor up to like 500. This is basically the quality of your blur. Okay, so now we see chaos. Let's look at what this looks like in the normal, normal version. There we go. And let's turn this mix down. Let's turn a little bit less noise into that Voronoi. And instantly we can see that these hard seams as we go up slowly are being blurred. There we go. You can't see any seams and I'm barely at like dot one. Let's preview that. So this is the blur effect we just made. We could turn up that quality by playing with the roughness and of course the detail and maybe some scale. Let's try 1000. Yeah, there we go. Now it's like below pixel level and that's what we want. We want those blurred soft edges. You can get better results if you use the color and as opposed to the uh, factor output. So use color and you actually will have all your edges blurred evenly, whereas before there was a few sharp edges left over. Um, so as you drag this up more, it gets more and more blurred, which is essentially mixing the image tiles are overlapping each other, uh, which is really cool. So let's go back to normal viewing mode over here. Control shift, click the BSDF. There we go. Our tiling is gone. Dark edges we're seeing are probably just a feature in the actual texture. There's like a little bumpy hill, I think, in there. So that's what we're seeing there. It's not the edges of the image themselves. Cool. We just untiled an image in a way that Blender cannot do natively. Maybe one day it will, but this is a really handy feature to understand. Save it as a node group for future use. You can do the same trick with this um, noise going into location as well as scale. I can randomize the scale on this texture and it really gives a great variety. I'm gonna increase this to maybe 20. All right, now let's start adding other textures on top of this. So this is one texture, all going into one BSDF right here. I'm gonna get rid of this displacement. I'm not using that. Now we can blend between one BSDF set and another by using the mix shader. Put it right there, plug that in. So again, this is the mix shader right here. We can mix between A, which is this one, the one we just made, the grassy rocky ground, to B, which is <laughs> a white texture of nothingness. So let's add some rock to this one. So control shift T, go up. This one looks good to me. I'm gonna select all these. There we go. Now we have our second texture. Let's keep things organized. I'm gonna move these up here. Actually, I'm gonna put them down below because the first texture is going on top like that. Number two is below it. Try to be organized and clean. I'm just gonna copy this one that we made earlier, this uh, mix RGB and plug in ambient occlusion. Now this scale, same as before, is uh, really, really wrong. <laughs> Let's try 32. Zoom in. It's still way too big. Let's go to like 64. Now this really depends on where your camera is going to be. You know, how close is your camera? Will it really be able to see the scale of this texture? Maybe not. But the cool thing is we can actually uh, copy this that we did earlier. Copy all these nodes right here. Shift D and move them down. And remember, we need to grab the UV data, plug it into A right there. 
And then this is our rotation hack. Plug that into rotation. There we go. Now this rocky texture is untiled as well. Although if you zoom out enough, you'll probably begin to see some kind of pattern that maybe because uh, the scale of this is much larger than the actual image textures. So within this yellow, that rocky texture is being tiled like a grid. And over here, tiled in a different rotation. Over here, a different rotation. So you could increase the uh, scale of this Veronoi texture, a little smaller, and that might help avoid some of that. Let's go back to previewing the mix shader, the final one. And yes, I think that's much better. All right, so how do we mix between uh, the rocky plains, or grassy plains, and this ground rock? Well, we are going to use a noise texture and plug it into this mix factor. So let's start with a noise texture. We're going to plug that into a color ramp. By the way, I'm pressing Shift A to get to that add menu, and then I click on search. I don't go through the menus really ever. It just saves me time. Plug this into the mix factor, and let's add some contrast here. Awesome. So now if I zoom out, it looks like a cloudy landscape, which is a pretty cool look. But this is actually uh, a mixing between the white rocks and the rocky grassy plains. So the white rocks are very white, and I'm actually going to make them a little bit darker with a curve node. That way they'll hopefully blend a little bit better photographically. There we go. Not so much white. You can even modify the colors if you want them there to be more green to blend in better with something. You can do that or less. Make sure you go back to C or curve to get to the normal brightness adjustments. Okay, now this noise texture is very vague and uh, undetailed. So let's add some detail, add a little bit of roughness, and maybe some scale. Okay, so now we can see the brighter parts are actually the rocky texture fading in and out of the first texture we added. Very cool. If you want the split to be more defined, just increase the contrast in your noise like that. That's a little too obvious. But I'm sure there's some cases where that would look pretty natural, assuming they blend together really well. Now remember we have control over the scale. We can flip it to be the opposite. And if we increase our roughness, we get a lot more kind of rough edges around the noise pattern that is mixing things. All right, cool. I'm gonna zoom in and get a, maybe just a camera angle set up here. Control Alt Zero. I want this to be a wide angle. So I'm gonna do like 28. Zoom in a little closer and get a upward looking angle. So from this angle and with the changes we've done, I can't tell that the images are tiling at all. Even into the horizon, I don't see any repeating patterns and that's what we want. Now I have obviously not done any kind of displacement or uh, moving of the ground, which I normally would do at a later stage to add some more um, real realness to this terrain because it's a super flat Minecraft world right now. Um, and that is easy change. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. You can obviously use the technique uh, in more and more layers, you can use another mix right here with another noise texture to blend in another texture on top um, and uh, just keep going until you have uh, the variety that you want. You can even use texture painting to paint where you want each texture to be using white and black. Let's add some irregularity to the terrain. The way I do that is first by subdividing this. So F3 subdivide. And this is a really large plane, so I'm going to do like 40. Let's go to wireframe mode. Yeah, there we go. And then let's do 45. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab one face. I just selected it. I'm in face select mode. Turn on proportional editing. And if I press GZ and move things up, I have a little wheel. But I'm going to increase the size by doing my mouse wheel down. There it is. We can also use the page, page up and page down on your keyboard to increase or decrease the size. And look at this. If your circle is really big, it's affecting a lot of the pieces next to it. And you can, of course, uh, control the curve. So let's do sharp. Watch this will look very different. More of like a pointy uh, peak like that. So I'm just going to grab random faces like this and GZ up just a little bit. You can also grab some and move them down. The ones in the back, I'd move farther up and maybe even change the curve type. Something a little bit more thick like that to make like some kind of mountain range. This one is good for hills. The uh, smooth is really nice for just making large hills. So let's see what we can see here. I'm actually going to box select this and watch. This shows me what I can actually see. All that stuff is in the camera view. I could actually grow this a little bit with control plus. 
control I and delete these. These aren't even seen, right? So I'm going to save my computer processing power and make my viewport a lot smoother. Um, so that's, that's a nice tip right there. If you want to get rid of the stuff you're not going to see, only do that if you know for sure your camera angle is set and it's not going to move or see any of these uh, parts because they will be deleted if you did what I just said. So if your camera is good, go ahead and do this to save yourself some rendering and PC power. But I'm not going to do it. Control A to deselect. So I'm moving some of these pieces. There's something way back here that's not really, it's kind of low. So I'm going to grab that one, move that up pretty high. Nice. So in rendered view, this covers up the horizon, which is great. You could add a uh, more of a rocky like mountain texture and feed that in up there. You can even use a Z axis as a gradient. So the higher texture gets, the more a certain texture fades in. Now I had kind of uh, covered up some of my mountain here. So I'm going to click down here to set my 3D cursor at the bottom. Move to 3D cursor. And I'm going to press SZ0. There we go. I flattened out the whole area, maybe a little too flat. But that's because my proportional editing is still pretty big. So SZ, yeah, I'm going to page down a little bit. Press 0. Maybe some of these two, SZ0. So I'm just putting these on a flat plane with my 3D cursor. So that they're not popping up too much and covering up my, uh, my structure here. I could add some small hills by selecting these faces right in front of the camera and subdividing them to give them some faces that I can grab and move. I'm going to put a subdivider uh, modifier, subdivision modifier on this. So it's going to ultimately smooth out what I just did, which is like low poly editing and make them look nice and smooth. How smooth is up to you. I'm going to put viewport at one and render at three. Now I'm using a sky shader to give me this lighting in the sky, of course. Um, I'm going to play with that a little bit to try to get a more dramatic, epic look. Let's put the sun maybe behind the temple like that. I want it to be very low, right over the horizon. There we go. Turn my air up to give it kind of a desert look. In my render tab, I'm going to go down to color management, turn my contrast uh, from filmic to high contrast. And then lastly, my comp in my compositor, I'm going to add the glare node. This is some bonus stuff here. I did not intend on putting in the video, but you know what? Why not? It'll help somebody. Oh, I forgot one thing. I noticed there are some kind of edges right here. This ugly shading thing. I didn't shade smooth on my ground mesh. So select it, press W and select shade smooth. If you don't see that, just press F3 and type in shade smooth and do that. That'll smooth out those polygon issues. Um, I did scale my texture up a little bit more, which meant I also had to scale up my Voronoi kind of rotation scattering noise as well to match that scale or else you will see some obvious tiling. So this is before I did that. And then this is after you can see, especially on these hills, it looks a lot better here because I scaled my textures up and my Voronoi up. Uh, also the ground plane looks real stretched here because the textures are just very large. Um, and here it's much, much better. So decide on the scale early on. I should really put a human being here so I can really visualize how big these rocks should have been. Maybe not the greatest example of the technique, but I do hope you get the, the power of the technique that it's super awesome to have in your tool set uh, for your scenes. Now my next step of course would be the actual decoration of this world. So scattering, you know, plant life, actual 3D rocks to give real depth and putting things in here to basically frame what the center of focus is, which would presumably be this temple. So anyway, hope you like this video. Hope you enjoyed my technique of layering textures as well as offsetting the rotation. If you have any questions, ask down below. Thanks for watching.